now watching West Harper Community yeah. Television. You're watching West Harper Community Television. You're watching West Harper Community Television. For the community, by the community. Welcome, hello, this is Art Talks, and I'm your host, Joanne Bauer. Before I turn to my three guests today, I do want to share a bit of information with you. Events that are coming up, including an ev two events that we'll talk about further today on the show. Uh, oh, and I wanted to mention that this is an anniversary for me. This is a one-year anniversary for Art Talks. We've been involved with this uh, show for community, the West Hartford Community Television, for a year now. So congratulations to me, but even more impressive and more importantly, the West Hartford Art League on Buena Vista Road is celebrating its 80th anniversary this year, 80 years of community art. And many of you who would be part of the Art League are probably noticing the e-blasts coming out from the art director, Roxanne Stahalik, 80 Days of Art, leading up to the fundraiser, their gala, the 80th art anniversary, and uh, so these e-blasts feature different artists who are members or who are connected with the West Hartford Art League and all of that art is for sale in fact. The anniversary or art anniversary gala is the annual fundraiser and that will occur on Friday June 20th and it will entail cocktails, hors d'oeuvres, dinner and dancing, and there will be a silent auction. So for more information, people should feel free to go to the website. It's westhartfordart.org. Also, I want to mention that on Saturday, June 14th, we will have in Hartford the first annual Impact Fest, and two of my guests will be talking further about the details but I wanted to let you know right up front that that's going to be in Bushnell Park from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. in the evening. You can come for the whole day. You can come for a single part of, of the event. There will be artists. There will be open studio Hartford artists in the pump house. I definitely want to say that. I know you have many partners. And a wonderful website also, and that would be HartfordImpactFest.com. So, now that we have got the details out of the way, I'm going to turn to my first guest, Beverly Duncan. Bev has been an artist, a watercolor, primarily a watercolor artist, with the West Hartford Art League, and she lives in Avon, but has a history of, uh, let's say, a history that goes back at least 20 years, right? That's right. And for 15 years has been part of a group and, and she's going to tell us more about the uh, Tuesday painters who get together informally and tell us, and then she's also brought pieces, so we'll talk about your art. Bev, tell us, tell us what you want to share. Oh, thank you. Well, the Tuesday painters is a group of seven women who have been painting together for 15 years. Uh, we don't have an instructor per se, but we formed after uh, the death of our our beloved instructor, Mary Roy, who taught at the West Hartford Art League. And because we wanted to continue painting together, um, I called the group together, and we have since then rented studio space at West Hartford Art League. Right, so you're, you're the convener, so, but yes, it's really so an informal group of people who have continued to meet weekly and to paint for 15 years. I'm very impressed. And during that time, we've also had instruction from many of the West Hartford um, art instructors, uh, most recently from Frank Federico, uh, with whom most of us continue to study. 
Now, so does he, can, now, do they come into your Tuesday group or? No, no, but the classes are convened at other times. Yes. During the week. So really, this is so, a group that's maintained itself for 15 years. That's with, correct. With your lead, leadership. That's correct. I'm very we, impressed. Most we encourage each other, and, uh, and it's not a critical group, but we give each other suggestions, ideas for new materials, uh, various approaches. Uh, so, and we encourage each other in other ways, too. Discuss oh, all the, the uh, problems of the world. Oh, so it's <laughs> so we, a we cover all too. We <laughs> cover all the current events as well. And, that sounds uh, delightful. And there's seven women. And you brought some of the pieces. I'm assuming that some of your work here you actually did during your Tuesday yes, painting group. Yes, all of, all of these. Okay. And I chose uh, three different ones because each shows a various aspect of either materials or approaches in painting. Right, and, and I want to highlight that because I think that's so important. You have three watercolor pieces here, but we can see, and the audience will see, that they're very different in technique or and or, as you said, in some surfaces. So tell us a little bit more. Well, many of the original ideas of my artwork come from nature or places I've visited, yes. which um, in one of them, it's um, an abstract, but it started out as a painting of pansies. And yes. then that gave me the, some of the basic uh, shapes and colors. Right. And then applied to that our, our approaches like spattering and making it a little more lively. Right, spattering, <laughs> that's, that's wonderful. So when you started, Bev, did you, did you have pansies in front of you? Were you working from a I photograph? I pansies in my you, garden. So you're working from your... From nature, actually from oh, the direct... Oh. Okay. From the little pansies in front of me that oh, I okay. picked. <laughs> so you did. You yes. started out with the, the natural in, in, um, inspiration. <clears throat> and then from there, it became more abstract. That's correct. <laughs> and then you have the, more, the most realistic of the three that you've brought to us. Do you want to talk about that piece? That would be the, um, the, the one, one that's that on is the front. done on... Um, a paper that is actually a plastic. It's called Yuppo. Yuppo? Yuppo, Y-U-P-O. Okay. And many of us have experimented with it. And the wow. paint actually uh, sits on the surface. Does, it's wow. not absorbed into the paper. How and, long does and it take so to dry? It, well, it can take a half an hour or an hour to oh, dry. Okay. So you work with it flat okay. and then let oh, it dry wow. and puddle and work with that. And Do you like it? Do you like it it's, as a surface? It's exciting. It's very challenging. I'm sure it's yeah. very different from it other is types different. of Some people like paper. it a lot. I, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> but not a lot. <laughs> I noticed. <laughs> and then you brought your third piece, which is the, more, the most abstract, I that would say. Is, yes, that's the most abstract. It's also the purest watercolor in the sense that I used uh, just three primary colors, transparent watercolor in a very free uh, way. The um, idea uh, for the abstract was actually a shell, which I brought along, right. which Thank I had you for bringing this collected to show uh, us. That's the, the shell <laughs> on a beach here. in Florida. Of course, yeah, a shell and, uh, that we all have uh, seen shells similar to that, and that became the inspiration. So I love I, that you brought it in. I looked at this and held it, and then took some of the lines from it oh. and then created that in the painting and added the color and then black ink while it was still wet. So wow. that's what uh, I ended up with as an That's abstract. very brave of you, I think, with the black well, ink. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all have to be very brave, you know. It's just a piece of paper. <laughs> but it worked wonderfully. I don't know. That's... <laughs> For me, that's well, the tough part. When you're working with the more, anyone. yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, sometimes it's things beautiful. just happen yes, like they that do. when you're free. And I think that's what, um, as a group, we try to just foster the creative spirit in each other. And uh, if true. we're accepted I, I, into shows, that's wonderful. Uh -huh. uh, we're all members of the Connecticut Watercolor Society and also, of, of course, of West Hartford Art League. Uh -huh. Um, many have won Best in Show at the oh, West Hartford Art League uh, shows over the years. Absolutely. And then, of course, most recently, we were honored to 
have a show at the Saltbox oh, Gallery. Oh, right. Just the seven of you. Yes. And that and was just, what, last month? Or that was in April. In April. Mm -hmm. And tell me a little bit about that show. How, how many pieces did each well, artist each bring? Well, each of us uh, brought seven pieces. Oh, my goodness. And it, was, um, it could be termed a retrospective. They didn't all have to be recent works. Yes. And many of us just took the paintings off our walls at home <laughs> right. and of brought course. them. And we had the most wonderful turnout of townspeople and friends from the area. For the reception. For the reception. And it was just a very exciting time to celebrate art. That, that and, sounds uh, wonderful. And, we, and I think we should just underline that uh, these art receptions are great opportunities to eat and drink and mingle, more so than to see the art. Sometimes it gets very crowded <laughs> at the West Hartford Art League, it and does, you have to come back <laughs> to see the art. But it's a great time to see your neighbors and friends and fellow artists. That's right. And then the, uh, the galleries are open after that as well. So yes, and the galleries are open. Usually for open about times. a month, mm -hmm. the show will will um, continue. It's best to check the website, but usually the West Hartford Art League, I believe, is open Thursday through Sunday, 1 to 4, for the gallery That's exhibits. Correct. Yeah. So now, I was looking on their website, and I saw that they had some photos, the, some historic photos, since this is their 80th anniversary. Um, pictures of a Saturday morning art school that started in 1960. A, um, let's see, in 1969 they had, oh, you would be interested in this, they had a day called Art in Action. That was to celebrate their 30th, 35th anniversary. And there was mention here in 1964 at, the, uh, at, at 30 years that the uh, co-founder named Rebecca Fields was speaking about how just wonderful this was, that uh, this was the first community arts center in the area. So that was the West Hartford Art League, part of their history. Um, and as you said, Bev, they have classes and workshops, gallery exhibits, receptions. They sponsor outdoor sculpture throughout West Hartford. And they collaborate with the public schools, too. So those are just some of the things that I'm aware of. And thank you for coming in to talk to us about the Art League. I want to introduce my two other guests, Olusanya Bay and Lauren Little. They are both here representing a group called, a nonprofit group called Public Allies, and they will give us more details about the Hartford First Annual Impact Fest coming up in Bushnell Park on June 14th. Welcome. So, Olu, tell us a little bit about how this is coming together, your first annual. Okay, well, um, Public Allies is a nonprofit. They're actually an arm of um, VISTA and AmeriCorps. Okay. And they develop new leadership in communities. Um, Public Allies, our definition of leadership is that it is an action that everybody can take, not a position that a few people hold. So we believe in going out into the communities and helping the individual residents of the communities take ownership and responsibility for their communities. And um, so we develop leaders across the spectrum of whatever community it is that we serve. And, and we do that by being placed in partner organizations. So public allies will go into a community and create partnerships with different organizations, um, usually nonprofit, but you know not always. So, for instance, in Hartford, we have allies at Husky Sport, which is a program run by UConn. We uh, have allies at uh, Community Renewal Team, mm -hmm. um, Village for Families mm -hmm. and Children, um, the YWCA, and uh, True Colors. Oh, which and is did you say, uh, this, is, this is an organization, Public Allies is an organization that's been in existence for more than 20 years, correct? For, yeah, 20, 20 years or more. I know at the time that the uh, current CEO, Paul Schmitz, wrote his book, which was 2012, he had been the CEO for 18 years. So, I see. <laughs> so I, <laughs> okay. I know it's like 20 years or more. I'm not sure of the exact date. In fact, one of the first uh, members of Public Allies board, who also was a public ally herself, was uh, the First Lady Michelle Obama. Oh, 
Michelle Obama. Right. Oh, who, 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 who has actually been quoted as saying that public, her experience as a public ally was one of the greatest experiences of her life. So, oh, sure. I mean, it, it is an organization that, that really gives uh, young people an opportunity to, to experience, one, the nonprofit sector. Like, for instance, me, I'm not exactly young, but until I came to Public Allies, I really had no idea how, like, the nonprofit sector really worked mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and what they do in, in communities in their various aspects. And uh, my experience of Public Allies, like, really opened my eyes up to that, you know, as well as how we as individuals can become um, leaders in our community, you know. Right. So it's, so it's a, a grassroots effort to inspire leadership and to really pay attention to the needs of the community. And this organization is nationwide, is that correct? Public Allies is nationwide. Yes. And then in Hartford, it has specifically, I mean, in Connecticut, it has Hartford, uh, Bridgeport, New Haven okay. bases. Right. Right. And so, Lauren, then Public Allies is the umbrella, is that correct, for the Impact Fest? So Public Allies is what we work for here in Hartford, and they that's our team service project. So out of all the different allies who are in Hartford, we have to come together and do something that will help build the community. In order to do that, we had to have a couple of events when we invited residents to speak about what they want, okay. change in Hartford, give suggestions. And what we have been told is that there are a lot of good things happening in Hartford. There's nonprofits doing good things, there's different cultures, and there's like entertainment and there's arts, but a lot of those things aren't connected. People They're aren't not connected. There's no cohesion. People aren't communicating with each other, uh, or there may be nonprofits that are doing good things in different areas, but they're not willing to share their resources, maybe for granting <laughs> issues or other things like right, that. Right, because you know, we, do, we do know Hartford is a small town and there's a lot of competition for the same funds and they're turf wars, unfortunately. Exactly. So your, your effort is to bring more cohesion and connectedness and, across. And, and mostly and collaboration. Right, and cooperation. To foster, <laughs> right, to foster a spirit of collaboration and, and more, more sharing of our assets and and that's one of the things i'm um, listening to bev talk that I, I i really enjoyed is her tuesday group right. you know because uh again our our strategy in communities is basically asset-based community development so we asset don't look based. at things from a deficit base we look at them from an asset base assets so and resources we want to identify because everybody has a gift so we want to identify their gifts and then we want to encourage them to share their gifts. For instance, mm -hmm. there are seven painters right. who all have a gift for art, okay. and they've come together and they've shared it with each other for 15 years. I know, and they've stayed and, together. And, and that does speak to community, doesn't it? it that, is, mm -hmm. that, that is what community is. See, I, I often tell people that the lost art is being human <laughs> and how we relate to each other. Mm -hmm. And the fact mm -hmm. that when we come together and we experience each other, the end result should be something beautiful. So you're really talking about, to me, it seems like a very deep and rich connection that will build over time and over trust. And how does that then connect to Impact Fest and what will folks find that day in Bush Bushnell Park? So they'll see a couple different things. Mm -hmm. They'll see nonprofits in the area that will be able to serve and show what resources they have. And we also have people who are going to be presenting on stage. We have CT Improv who is doing a set of their comedy. We have the Pakistani Cultural Association and they're doing um, like, they're having vendors and they'll also be doing some presentations. And then who else do we have over? <laughs> we'll be conducting uh, Hartford's first pop-up street store for the homeless. Pop up, pop up street, street store, store for the homeless. For the homeless. Right. This is a, a collaboration that we created with um, a nonprofit in Cape Town, South Africa. They were the first ones to do it, and they what they do is they ask individuals in the community to donate clothing. So for for maybe a week two days, however long, right. they set off drop off locations, yeah. and they have individuals drop off clothing. And then they partner with an uh, organization in whatever community they're doing it in right. that serves the homeless people. 
and they create a pop-up street store. Now, so will the, that store exist just for the day of June 14th or longer? For, or where it, it will exist. In, in this instance, just for that day, okay. but we're hoping with a number of the things that we'll be introducing right. at Impact Fest that they become continued efforts. So this will be Hartford's first pop-up street store. Right. Hopefully it won't be the last. Right. You know, um, right. And, what, and, and the idea is most homeless people have clothing donated to them and they have really no choice in what clothing oh, they get. Right. So we right. want to give homeless people an opportunity to actually shop for their own clothing and 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 not just shop for their own clothing but also to to put faces we want right. the donators to see the people they're donating to we want the recipients to see the donators because again we're talking about connections and relationship right. building because that's the basis of of any effort being continuable and sustainable is developing that relationship that will allow the individuals involved to maintain it. And I know from your website too that this is very much part of a larger effort currently that's called sharing economies or people who are taking the uh, economic um, system into their own hands. I know locally in Hartford we have something that's a, a time bank of sorts right do you want to talk uh, a little bit more about sharing economies right um well sharing economies again are are based on individuals identifying each other's gifts and assets and being more open to sharing them with each other in an effort to make sure that we are all getting what we need to survive and and to thrive um, again over the course of our community conversations you know, it became clear to us that Hartford has enough for everybody. What Hartford doesn't have is a means of distributing it equitably, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And so the sharing economy is based on collaborative consumption. People coming together and using their resources in a collaborative way mm -hmm. to make sure that everybody has what they need. For instance, the Hartford Hour Exchange or Time Bank is based on individuals um, volunteering hours to each other okay. based on whatever their asset is. For instance, um, like our, our website, I, I built our website. Oh, you did? It's quite an impressive website. Did I say that yet? <laughs> I like it a lot. <laughs> so, so for instance, I'll offer to volunteer to teach you web design for an hour. When I, I need that too, but, by the way. So Sign me on. <laughs> when, when, I, when I teach that hour of web design for you, I accumulate an hour in the time bank. I can then take my hour and go to Bev and say, Bev, can you show me how to do watercolor? So, so different than just a straight on barter, it's actually a way to share amongst a group of people. It's, it's developing a local economy that's based on people sharing their gifts, not necessarily exchanging money. Because one of the things that I've noticed is that if you ask the average individual what economy means, they're going to say money. Money. But it's actually the distribution of resources. Mm -hmm. Money is just the medium of exchange. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what we realize is that because people have lost sight of the actual exchange, mm -hmm. that you can find a lot of money exchanging hands with very little resources coming in <laughs> right. return. So <laughs> right. the sharing economy actually allows you to get back to that exchange of resources right you know um and 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 so they're doing it involved around time you know so For the, the, the time bank right, so mm -hmm. so i tell people um it's not about money it's about the time and the gift that's being exchanged for instance right. if your doctor is having a july 4th barbecue and has a house full of family and friends and his pipe in the house burst that at that time the janitor he calls hour or two is just as value as the doctor's Absolutely. hour or two. That's a great point. So I know with the time banks everybody's hour, everybody's hour of time or two hours or three hours is valued equally. Is valued equally. That's a great and, uh, and, point. And it, and it varies, you know, the 
of course, the more people you have involved, the better it is because then there's more gifts and assets to share. Right. And there are, there are models out there, of course, that Hartford has borrowed with the Time Bank. There are models, and I'm sure with the, the Impact Fest, there are models that we borrow from, too. If, if artists wanted to get involved with Impact Fest, what might they do? What do they need to know at this point to be um, part of that day on June 14th? We still want to get people involved because, again, this is a community event. So we want to say this is for Hartford. Okay. So whatever people can present and be how they can be part of Impact Fest is by going to our website, going to the website .com, and they can sign up to be like on our vendor page and sign up to be either a speaker or an artist. And we're still looking for volunteers for our research and development team. So if people who are residents want to be involved in the planning and also with execution of the event towards. Um, like the beginning of June, we still want applicants to come in because it's just the most important thing for us is to make sure that Hartford residents are involved and that this is for the community and that is represented during Impact Fest. Right, so it, I would assume that given that this is your first year, that one important piece is getting the word out and having people know that they can be part of it. And even if they can't get it together for this year to know that they can come to the event 11 and 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. on June 14th and then next year they could be even maybe more involved with the planning and going forward and they can definitely sure. sign up if they want to do that and I just think it's just really important for them to visit the website because if you're a business a nonprofit a corporation or individual you can be involved in Impact Fest Right. So, do you know we're almost out of time, and I want to just say that you, there's an opportunity for any last words that any one of you would like to I have one. Go I ahead, just want to say uh, a shout out to our sponsor, which is Travelers, and so yes. I say thank, thank you for you. their support. Well, I just want to say that if you live in Hartford and you have a gift that you want to share, go to the website. You let us know what you want to come to the uh, Impact Fest, which we're also calling a Share Fest. You let us know what you want to share, and we'll make it happen. Excellent. Thank you. And speaking of gifts, I just want to say that I have a poetry gift. And uh, the day after your event on June 15th, I'm going to be reading and launching, reading from my book and launching my book at Butterworth Hall in Hartford. So I put in a plug for myself there. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> so thank you all for coming today. And again, this is Art Talks on West Hartford Community Television. We thank the uh, station and all of the help that we receive here. Thank, thank my you. guests. Thank you, Zoe.